Today I wanted to talk about Newton's bucket, the universal rest frame, Mach, space, and the quantum field. And for those who may not be familiar, Newton had a thought experiment where he takes a bucket, suspends it by a rope, twists it up, fills it full of water, and then he considers that at first the water is flat. And then when he releases the bucket, the bucket starts to move, but the water is still flat at first. And then when the water gets up to the speed of the bucket, it becomes curved, so you have centrifugal force taking effect. And then if he reaches out and stops the bucket, or it stops at the end of the twist, then the water is still curved for a while, even though the bucket stopped. And that shows that it's not the bucket making water curve. But somehow, the water knows that it's rotating. And that can only be true if there's some sort of universal frame of reference, absolute frame of reference. And this absolute frame of reference tells the water somehow through a physical mechanism that must be determined that it's rotating. So this is fascinating. We don't know when we're talking about linear motion how fast we might be moving relative to an absolute frame of reference. But for rotational motion, we do. And it's not just a bucket. You, a gyroscope knows when it's rotating. If the, the water, for example, didn't know it was rotating, it never would curve. There has to be some interaction that identifies that it's rotating so the curvature happens. And what's interesting is if this universal field that is interacting with the water or gyroscope were rotating, then when you're stationary with a bucket with stationary water, the water would be curved. So it does tell us that this universal field is not rotating. Now we can see even if we're stationary on Earth, we can see things like the Coriolis effect that tell us the Earth's rotating. So we have experiments we can do without actually having to monitor the Earth from space. So it's really fascinating that we have this effect. And if you have a universal rest frame with respect to rotation, you have one with respect to linear motion, even though you can't detect it directly. So what causes this? What is the universal rest frame? Well, we already found out it's not the bucket. And it's not the room, it's not Earth, it's not the sun. You can pull one of the thought experiments from my science playbook and say if you have an elevator or a rocket that's accelerated at 9.8 meters per second squared, the gravitation of Earth, then you can suspend a bucket inside the rocket and repeat the experiment and get the same result. And you can have the rocket go in any direction relative to the Earth or the Sun, and the Earth and the Sun have no effect on the experiment. But then there are people who say that, okay, well, maybe not individually, but all the stars and galaxies combined have the effect. And this was an idea proposed by Ernst Mach, and it's called the Mach effect or Machian interpretation. And this is still very popular. So even though one star and our local star, the one that if there's actually scientific evidence that it matters, we should see something, but we don't. But all the stars do. So anyway, you can already tell I don't believe that. The one that Newton picked was space. Now, he didn't really have a physical interpretation of space. And some people say that there's a physical space without being able to say what it is. But that's one of the possible answers, maybe. Although, if there's no physical space, there's no physical interaction, so there's no way for it to work mechanistically. And then I say it's the quantum field. It's rotating with respect to the quantum field when there's a reaction. And you might say, well, what about the cosmic microwave background? It gives us a rest frame based on our measurement, showing that we're moving 600 
kilometers per second relative to it. So maybe that. There's a field that is producing the cosmic microwave background. But the rest frame of that has to be the same as a quantum field. Or maybe, maybe you believe in the Higgs ether. And if you believe in the Higgs ether producing mass, then maybe it produces inertia and then it provides the rest frame. Although the Higgs ether has to have the same rest frame as the quantum field and the cosmic microwave background. So we're all talking about the same thing. And thanks to the commenter who showed me, told me the term Higgs ether. I think it's wonderful. And then, last but not least, you have no ref rest frame at all. Some people say, uh, I, don't, I don't believe this Newton guy, and there's no universal rest frame. And it, with a gyroscope, no, there's no universal rest frame telling a gyroscope whether it's spinning or not, or, and, or telling the water it's spinning or not. There, there, just, there isn't one. So those are the options. And so scientists generally pick among them. Einstein tried to say, well, we'll go with the Machian effect, which is in line with gravity being caused by all the stars and planets. And that, so he thought that inertia was also caused by stars and planets and that the Newton bucket effect was caused by all the stars and planets. The problem with that is they've been believing that a hundred years and no one has ever solved the inertia problem. Oh, did I mention that, that this has to be tied to inertia too? Whatever the field is that is causing the water to know that it's spinning, that knowledge is related to inertia. So whatever the material it is that the water is interacting with, to show that it's rotating, that material has to cause inertia. Now, when I think about inertia, I like to start with electromechanical inertia because that's the one we know the best. When an, an electron moves, it causes quantum dipoles to rotate and quantum dipole rotation keeps the electron moving. And in that way, electrical charges or currents have electrical electromagnetic inertia. You have electrical motion causing magnetic fields and magnetic fields causing electric motion, electric current. So it would make more sense if inertia for non-charged objects or inertia with respect to mass were the same. And because the mass of an object in electromagnetic equation and also in just standard inertial equation and in gravitational equation, the mass is the mass. It's the same either way. And because mass is due to acceleration, the cause of acceleration has to be the same. And so the cause of inertia has to be the same or related. You can't have one form of inertia for electromagnetic theory and another one or mechanical theory. So that's kind of where we're stuck. So all we can really think of as a first step in understanding inertia is say as a body moves it causes quantum fluctuations to rotate and as quantum fluctuations rotate it causes the body to keep moving. And if you do that you get a very simple explanation for inertia. I call it the matter force because it leads to a force that's not electrical but follows Maxwell's equations. So we have to figure out what is this universal rest frame and how does it cause inertia. And as I said the Machian experiment has failed and I think we should look at the idea that it's quantum field. So we have to ask the question, what makes up this universal rest frame? How does it interact with water? How does it interact with gyroscopes? How does it cause inertia? And my answer is, it's the quantum field. The quantum field is responsible for all of it. And I discussed the gyroscopic motion interaction with quantum field in my book, The Zero Point Universe. 
So that's the question for you, and feel free to comment. Are you one of those people that believes in the mocking effect? Do you think it's space, or do you think it's a quantum field? Or, or maybe you're a haze ether believer, and you think it's related that way. I'm curious what you think. So I hope you learned something, and I hope you understand, or at least agree, that the idea that there's no universal rest frame is, does not square itself with Newton's bucket thought experiment. So I hope you like it and if you do please like below, share it with your physicist friends, subscribe for my next videos and if you're interested in learning more like I said I describe it in my book The Zero Point Universe. I describe problems with physics in my book The Hundred Greatest Lies. And then my particle theory research is in my book, Goodbye Quarks, The Onion Theory. And if you buy one of my books, I hope you learn a lot from it. So, thanks for watching.